to Youth in Action, where youths are no longer the leaders of tomorrow, but of now. Today we have Hyrule Matete doing an amazing job as a teacher. Hyrule, karibu sana to the program. Thank you. Uh, they say being a teacher is a calling. What, what do you have to say about that? Uh, I think just like any other profession, um, being a teacher could be a calling, being a uh, being a banker will be a calling. So yes, being a teacher is a <laughs> calling. Yeah. And uh, there are different fields of teaching, yeah? So we, what field do you operate in as a teacher? Uh, so you know, when you study, uh, when you're a P1 teacher, you basically go, uh, go and teach everything mm -hmm. from math to science and uh, English social studies, so you teach everything, so you don't specialize on anything if you're a P1 teacher. You have been recognized internationally as a mentor. Mm -hmm. Talk about that for a bit. Um, so uh, I joined a program called Akili Dada. Mm -hmm. Akili Dada is an incubator leadership program where uh, young women from all over Africa, uh, mainly East Africa, uh, they get a chance to be mentored on how to run the organization. So you're taught on leadership skill, management, financial literacy, emotional intelligence. So a lot of things uh, you're taught in a, in a span of one year. Mm -hmm. And then you go out there and uh, make a difference in your community. Mm -hmm. So um, that is what we did at Akili Dada. So once you are done, you know, you also have to give back. So you also have to hold another woman's hand, also have to hold another girl's hand and bring her up. Mm -hmm. yes. I would like to know, how did you come across Akili Dada? Is it something you knew about? No, it's not something I knew about. It. I was just on my social media and then I came across it. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a great job, yeah? Thank you. Uh, what other activities are you involved in? Um, at Angels of Sunset. Mm, yeah, okay. What is Angels of Sunset? So um, I am the founder and director of Angels of Sunset. It's a talent academy for children and teenagers. So we take children between the age of 3 to 16 years. Mm -hmm. We train them on music, dance, modeling, acting, public speaking, and generally performing arts. Mm -hmm. And then every school holiday, we have events where these kids get a chance to showcase what we've taught them. Mm -hmm. And then people pay to come and watch them perform. Mm -hmm. So part of the money we raise from our ticket sales is used to equip a community library that we have in Manyata, mm -hmm. where children from... Manyata Slam can get access to workbooks used in school that their parents cannot afford. Mm. Yes. So Angels of Sunset, that name is striking. Where did it come uh, from? Uh, so um, well, you see when the sun sets, mm. there's so much hopelessness, there's so much uncertainty. You're not even sure what will happen. You know, it's dark. It's just like you've been blinded. Mm. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. And that is... Uh, the case for most children in Manyata, mm -hmm. uh, they are not sure of where their next meal will come from. They are not sure of their education. They are not even sure if come out Shule, will I go to a university? Will I go to a college? Will I go to a high school? Mm -hmm. So um, Angels of Sons, an angel comes in to show you that uh, there is still hope. There is someone who still cares. There is someone who sees you as a child in Manyata. Mm -hmm. There is someone who really wants you to have a bright future. So that is what happens with Angels of Sunset. Mm -hmm. So um, that is what we do for children in Manyata. And also, uh, just as we said, there is so much darkness at, when the sun sets. We also run a program at Kibo School for the Blind. Mm -hmm. Just from the name, the blind, mm -hmm. it's dark. Those children are, are always in darkness, whether it's during the day or night. So um, some of them have never interacted with books. Some of them are brought to school at a very late age when maybe they are 10, 12, and it's when they're in nursery school. So they've never even interacted with books. Mm -hmm. So Angels of Sunset comes in to just read to these children. We run a read aloud program for them and just help them interact with books as, even as they go through this other world that we 
uh, people who see mm. cannot uh, experience or cannot even fathom. Mm. Mm. So speaking about working with the children from Kibos School for Blind, do you have a training that works with children who need special needs? No, I, uh, I am not trained to work with children with special needs, mm. but passion drives you to do things. So I, um, I read a lot and I, I try as much as I can to just find ways that I can make it easier for them to just interact with education. Mm. Because I really believe that children are, children are the future mm. and uh, we are looking for that inclusivity in everything that we do, be it in fashion, be it in education, mm. and we do not want to let any children be left behind. Mm. Mm. And uh, how is the experience working with the, the children from Kibos? Do you know those children, they really love when people visit them because very few people go there. Mm. Um, so uh, when you just go there, there's just, uh, there's just that energy that they give you that you do not experience working with any other normal kid. Mm. Um, so uh, I feel uh, working with them, as much as our resources might be strained, but it's so fulfilling. Mm. Mm. And uh, by by resources being strained, what do you mean? Uh, you know, when you're going there, I have volunteers who will read to the children, so you need to transport them to that place. Mm. Uh, you need, uh, there are just some logistics that needs to go into place. You need to have different books. You need to buy those story books that you read to them. Mm. So there is a lot of logistics that goes, uh, goes into the Read Aloud program. And do you have uh, supporters or partners that you're working with to, to make sure that that is done? We believe that we cannot just do this alone. So we usually call out for people to come. So sometimes when we call out uh, for people who can just come as a, a reading assistants, we have friends who will show up with their cars. At least now we are sorted with their transport. We have friends who will just say we are buying snacks for the children. We have friends who will just say that we are doing photography for this so that people can see and it can get the publicity that it needs. Mm -hmm. So um, at the moment, we are working with Crowdall. Crowdall, uh, it used to be uh, called Amazing Kisumu. Mm -hmm. They've been great supporters of our projects from the community library that they've helped uh, build. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working with Ella Movers, who have also been a great partner in help making sure that People get transport to Kibo School for the Blind mm -hmm. and YGAP, who have just been uh, like donors to Angels of Sunset as an organization. Mm -hmm. We're also working with companies like Jade Collection, who have, who have supported Kibo School for the Blind immensely. And they've, gone, they've really gone out of their way, just being a business and not a social enterprise. So th they're not even looking at it as a CSR, mm. they, they have just gone out of their way to really uh, do it for Kibo School for the Blind. So we really appreciate Jade's Crowdall and Ella Movers mm. and YGAP as a partner. Mm. Mm. And uh, so what is the driving force behind Angels of Sunset? Seeing that you're working <coughs> with these kids and you're going out of your way without the training, without the, it's just passion. So what is the driving force of it? Uh, so, um, as I said earlier, um, I am really passionate about children and education, mm. and I really want to see uh, that inclusivity, and we, we fight for uh, more policies that will include not just children from, uh, let me say normal, for lack of a better word, not just children from normal families and normal schools. Mm. Um, it will be so nice to have uh, people who are supporting children from special needs school because as much as uh, any other kid in Kenya, any other kid in our society, mm -hmm. they really need people to show them they love. They really need people who can be parents and friends to them. Mm -hmm. And um, working with kids, sometimes you have to be a parent to them. How do you maneuver that, seeing that you're not a parent yourself? <laughs> yes, I am not a parent, but you see, when you're, when you're a teacher, you automatically become a parent mm -hmm. because there are those days when a child will come crying at mm -hmm. you will You'll have to be an adult and just see how you can, you can work around it. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I also have uh, nephews and nieces from my uh, my brothers and siblings. So um, it's just something that comes out naturally for me because I've also raised these my siblings, my nephews and nieces. So it's something that comes out naturally for me. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say what is your greatest achievement in your journey as Angels of Sunset till now? Uh, the greatest achievement that we've had, not for me as an individual, but as an organization and as a community that we've built over time, mm -hmm. is we've been able to build a good community library, well-lit and child-friendly, that children can access and uh, use those um, use those books that uh, their parents cannot afford. Mm -hmm. That has been our greatest achievement, mm -hmm. and also just having children come to uh, come to, from our our mentoring program mm -hmm. and go to events like Little Miss Kenya, get to represent Kisumu, get to represent CIA. That has been uh, one of the greatest achievements that we've had. Wow. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned the Little Miss Kenya. I believe that is a fashion uh, industry. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So how, what, let's talk about it. Are you part of it? Are you the founder or how is it? No, I'm not the founder. Mm -hmm. um, I am the county director, Little Miss Kenya, mm -hmm. for Siaya and Kisumu County. Mm -hmm. So what Little Miss Kenya does, they nurture kids' talent in the modeling world. Mm -hmm. So we have events at the county levels, so you, are, uh, you participate in Siaya, Kisumu, uh, Transoia, Nairobi, and then after all of uh, each and every county has held their event, uh, the winners get to represent their county at the national level. So when you win at the national level, you get to represent um, Kenya, or you get to represent Kenya for Little Miss World. Mm -hmm. And as we are talking about the achievements we've had, we've actually sent two of our children to represent Kenya for Little Miss World. Two children that actually come from Kisum. Wow. So you see, it's a really great mentorship <laughs> program. Yeah, it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of working with kids as models, mm -hmm. is it something you've, you wanted? Because you would have chosen mm -hmm. to work with adults in the fashion industry, mm -hmm. but you chose kids. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Uh, so... Uh, Modeling was inspired by what happened in school. Mm. Uh, so uh, when I was a teacher, when I was doing my teaching practice, I realized a lot of children were dropping out of school. They were, uh, they were not, uh, this, this reason was not because that they didn't like school, um, uh, they were just being stubborn. Mm. So um, there are very few books, if you've studied in a public school, mm -hmm. there are very few books in uh, school. So one book you will share among four or five people. So I uh, in the uh, when the teacher comes in the morning the following day, kama maybe the third person kitabu nini watu wawili badata maybe So you either have the option of uh, taking another person's book no copy, copy. Yeah. <laughs> Ama, you you just you just wait and get beaten and then you share. Mm. So I realized most of the teachers were sending these kids out of class and they felt these kids were lazy. Mm. But it wasn't even because of that. So these kids were getting ridiculed in class with their peers. Mm -hmm. They are getting frustrated and abused with teachers. So uh, most of these children's self-esteem had gone down. So I was looking for a way, how can I, how can I make change? How can I boost their self-esteem? Mm. So you know when you're told you're a model, automatically <laughs> your self-esteem goes yes, up because yeah. you feel you're pretty, you're beautiful. Mm. So um, that is how we started uh, the modeling journey. So we, we started doing modeling so that we can boost their self-esteem. So these children were really looking forward to uh, coming to school because they knew, ah, Gion, it, Gion, it's a fashion yeah. show. So yeah. they are really, at least it, it's something that will keep them inside school. Um, so, uh, but that wasn't going to solve the problem. The problem was they were not having books. enough books yeah, to true, true. So that is how we started doing the modeling. And then we have the fashion events. Mm -hmm. People come, pay, we buy books. Mm -hmm. And uh, the modeling sector, do you also involve the children at Kibos School for Blind? Yes, last year we did a fashion show that was immensely sponsored by Jade's collection. Mm -hmm where we just uh, had these uh, kids for the first time in Kisumu, in Kenya, and in Africa 
having a fashion show for blind children. Wow. So uh, yes, it's something we did and we are looking forward to having it this year. How, how did you do it? I'm curious, how did you do it? How did you tell them that this is what we're doing, walk like this? How? So there are, uh, so Angel Sobsan said, normally we have children who see. Mm -hmm. So, and then we also have these children from Kibos. Mm -hmm. And something that we are trying to create as an organization and uh, we are just trying to make sure that these children, we have blind children and then we have us who see. So there is that big gap. gap kati -kati yeah, true, true. So we are trying to find a way where our children will just be together. We'll just have that uh, unity, whether you whether you are blind, whether you are you are handicapped. Mm, they do no not care. There is no discrimination. Sure. It's just something that they bond with. Mm. So our children were working with them on the runway mm. uh, as, as as their guides, and then we also had trained dogs that were working with them. Mm. And then there are those kids who have low vision, so they can see some a color, something that is bright. Mm -hmm. So we used a yellow string mm -hmm. and showed them at uh, this is the runway, this is the end of the runway, this is where you need to pause, this is what you need to do. Wow, I would, I'm so interested to see that for myself. So you talked about uh, the mentorship, yeah? Mm -hmm. So being a mentor, you've come across Akili Dada, you've mentored the kids. What about yourself? How do you how do you pro uh, purpose to continue into the future with Angels of Sunset? Well, we want to make sure that we mentor a lot of children. Mm -hmm. And then you also know you cannot just uh, give from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. So I also need to be mentored. Mm -hmm. So I have people who, I also have women who have supported me, who have mentored me through this journey as a young leader, mm -hmm. who has also mentored me through this journey as uh, an a young organization that is trying to come up and is trying to make a difference. Mm. So um, as we continue, uh, I am looking forward to having. Um, I am looking forward to having other women who will support my organization, who will support our journey, who will support also the children that we work with. Mm. Mm. And uh, while working as Angels of Sunset, any challenges you've encountered so far that you feel like you need to mention them and a solution should be uh, brought about from that? Um, one of the greatest challenges is uh, just the resource train. Um, you see for the, the read aloud program at Kibo School for the Blind, just as I had mentioned, we really, have, we really need people to come in and, and support because those children really need us to be there and out there for them. Uh, for the community library that we run, uh, it has been hectic because you see the Kenyan curriculum, it keeps changing. So every time it changes, we need to uh, upgrade mm -hmm. our books mm -hmm. and sometimes you do not have those resources to immediately upgrade the books so maybe uh, <clears throat> today we are having kbl uh doing uh, we are having science primary science and then mm -hmm. the next time teachers want kbl and then in the next two months teachers are need work need breakthrough so you know the, the way the syllabus keeps changing mm -hmm. it's training it's training our resources and it's also we, we do not get to deliver so much for the children that we need to deliver to. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have people that help you develop the programs as they keep changing according to curriculum? Yes, I have a team of people who work. Um, we have teachers who have volunteered for the program. And then we also have the, read, uh, we have the reading assistants who usually help with tuition. We do a free tuition for children within Manyata. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what can the community, how can the community help? Mm. So how the community can help is, uh, you know, uh, education is something that, as much as we are all saying that we feel that we are so elite and, uh, and, uh, we, and people automatically know that masomoni mm. lazima. Parents in, in the slums, masomo si lazima kwao. Bora we get food, bora we get uh, shelter, that is all. So we realize even even in our program, a lot of parents come home to homework. They feel like 
ulikuwa unafanya nini huko mpaka saa moja? Mm. Lazima ufanye tu homework leo huko naweza kufanya homework kwa shule and you know the children do not want to go without doing homework because when are you ready when you are ready kill the way they will be sent out of class so the uh, in 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 manyata parents have really not embraced so much uh, that because most of the children are coming from broken families they are coming from uh, parents who are just neglected mm -hmm. so they do not see that as an option so we are um, maybe if we could just get a way of educating more parents mm -hmm. we don't let us not just assume that parents are are really out there for education parents are out there to look for food and shelter for their children they do not care about education mm -hmm. And uh, have you have you tried to get some systems to help educate the parents? Yes, we've tried. We've worked with uh, a few other people like Kefiado, Kenya Female Advisory Organization, mm -hmm. who are just trying to help us also um, equip the parents with knowledge that education is not like a tertiary or a secondary one for their children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so... Uh, there is a young person out there who feels they have a calling to do a certain thing, mm. but they've not actualized it as you have. What can you tell them? Um, usually we take so long because we think that we need a lot of money, we think that we need a lot of resources, and we need a lot of crowd following us before we start doing something. Mm. But we'll just encourage them that if, if you have something that is going to impact, that is going to change a community, that is going to change a life, mm. just start. Because at, at the end of the day, uh, it's you you waiting for someone, someone else is also waiting, waiting for, for you, you to start. So just start, you'll get people to mentor you, you'll get mm. people to walk you through the journey. Mm. So any any at any particular time, just start. Wow, wow, wow. You're working with kids and that is so commendable. I love your work. I would want to be part of it. So congratulations. Thank you for coming to the show. If you have a calling to do something, go ahead and start. You do not have to have a lot of money. You do not have to have a lot of resources. As she has said, just start. You will get the mentors. You will get the right resources. You will get the right networks to complete your task. This has been Youth in Action. See you next time. This is the way to do it.